Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? This is OJ. G Fuel is offering 40% off your entire order until Monday with code OJ40. If you're into G Fuel or you want to try it, this is going to be one of the best deals around. So team battles appear insanely hectic at first. It's gonna feel like pure chaos because there's so much going on. If you aren't on voice chat or you aren't playing beside your friend, it's going to take some getting used to. There may seem like there's a lot going on, but Elixir Regeneration has been adjusted to slow it down a bit. Like in a regular one-on-one -on -one match, Elixir regenerates every 2.8 seconds. Then in double Elixir time, it regenerates every 1.4 seconds. Now in a two versus two match, it's a bit slower, regenerating every 3.3 seconds. Then during double elixir time, it'll regenerate every 2 seconds. Keep this in mind the next time you try to overcommit in a push because you're not getting that much elixir. The mode requires quite a bit of communication. You can kind of relay to your teammate what you're going to do by hovering a unit to where you intend to place it. Like if you have a giant, you can hover it in the back so they know to support it. If you see a goblin barrel coming, hover the log onto the tower as soon as possible so they know not to double cast it with you. If you're not sure about your partner's card rotation, you can click their name and it'll show the four cards they have on hand as well. The biggest thing is communication and knowing who's responsible for logging the barrel. In terms of building decks, we've tried having one partner use all support and the other using all tanks. This worked sometimes if we were lucky, but after experimenting this was kind of a bad idea. As opposed to as if you both had balanced decks, where both had support and tank cards, it worked out much better. Think about it this way, if a goblin barrel is coming your way and only one partner has the log, and then your opponent sends in another barrel, you're now 15 cards out of rotation of the log. If you both have unbalanced decks, it's incredibly difficult to win. I played Expo and Nick played Expo. The result is that we got crushed because one of their 16 cards were Golem. There's no way we're going to get through to that. One of our opponents would play Golem. Okay, he's down 8 elixir, but now his partner has 10 elixir for a counter push to support that golem and demolish our expo. There were a few times where we accidentally forgot to switch up our decks and we were forced to play the starter deck with a giant, archers, bomber, fireball, knight, and arrows. And that deck works surprisingly well. If you think about it, the starter deck is a very well balanced deck. The giant is a tank, archers are reliable on defense, the bomber splashes, fireball, and arrows for AoE spells. Some of the best cards are the ones that can hit splash units. Bowler, Executioner, Wizard, Bomber, Baby Dragon, Valkyrie, Witch, you name it. These are the really good cards to have. Electro Wizard is really good too. His spawn zap is more valuable than ever if you need to take out Goblin Gang or Skeleton Army or any other swarm cards. And his zap stun attack is really important since it can interrupt Sparky or Inferno Dragon for those cheese decks. Oh, and Giant Skeleton works surprisingly well as a distraction unit that can take out an entire 30 elixir push. Bomb Tower is really solid, but it's a waste of elixir if they have Lava Loon. A very well-rounded building card in 2 vs 2 is Furnace. It can pull golems and giants, it can chip their tower, it can defend large pushes, and it can support you offensively. I've had moments where I couldn't counter their giant with Skarmy just because they had a Furnace supporting that giant. Spells are probably one of the most important aspects to consider in your building your deck. It's important that you carry at least one fireball or poison, maybe even a rocket, for those moments where they clump up a thousand elixir worth of troops for you to rocket for a positive elixir trade. The log is handy for at least one partner. Another partner can carry zap or arrows for swarm control backup. For tanks, I preferred Pekka over Golem because not only is she an excellent tank, but she can double up as a tank killer. Tornado is a decent card. It can activate two king towers, but at the end of the day, the princess tower does have the same health at 2500. If you look at the range of other king towers, it's not able to reach the opposite side very well. So really, when you're pushing on one side, there's only going to be two towers attacking your giant, unless they have a cannon or something to pull them into the center. With that being said, let's check out a game where I did run Tornado. In these replays, you can view the decks. You just have to click the corner buttons to pop out the decks. We're both running well-rounded decks. I have a giant in my deck as the primary tank. Guards to distract troops like E-Wizard, Pekka, Prince, or any other single target hitters. Witch is actually one of my favorite cards because she can distract ground troops with skeletons or she can splash swarms with her attack. Plus when there are 6 skeletons, it's a total of 500 DPS. So she's actually really good for taking out big tanks like giants. I played my giant a bit too early. There were way too many fire spirits distracting the E-Wizard. I didn't want my giant to go to waste, so I played my Ewiz to take out their Ewiz and Mega Minion. We're not worried about the golem on the right side because my furnace will pull that golem. At this point, I'm telling Wolf to support my giant so that I can use guards to take care of that golem on the right side. And those minions get destroyed by the fire spirits. 
This is what I'm talking about. Furnace is functioning as an offensive building, plus defensively because it's pulling that gold. In our first push, we take out the tower, and I activate the King's Tower with my Tornado. It's not even double elixir yet, and I was playing really aggressively while Wool conserved his elixir, because he had a lot of support spells to react. He plays a P.E.K.K.A in the back while I played my Furnace. I placed one tile too far so it won't pull the Lava Hound. Knowing Wool doesn't have his Fireball yet, I played my Poison to take care of those minions to protect his P.E.K.K.A. I called it out that I was going to play my E-Wizard to take care of the Balloon because his Princess and Goblin Gang wouldn't have been able to do much for the job. He spreads out his Princess for back and support, and minions to take care of the Lava Pups. Overall, a successful defense, and the field resets. So I'm telling him that I'm going to play the Giant in the back for our next push. And since Wool has 3 spells in his card slot, he rockets the Executioner to cycle his P.E.K.K.A. Now we're at double Elixir and we'll regenerate Elixir every 2 seconds for each player. Wool has the P.E.K.K.A up, and I played my Witch to support that P.E.K.K.A. This is where we fail to communicate. He used the Log and I used the Tornado to take out the Goblin Barrel. But that's fine because his P.E.K.K.A took out the Golem, and with both King's Towers activated, those Golemites disappeared really fast, and my Witch takes out the Minion Horde. The Balloon doesn't stand a chance, meanwhile they're struggling to defend the right side. I played Guards to protect the Princess from the Executioner, but that didn't work out. I should've played a Giant. With the last resort, they're playing E-Barbs on the left, but my Witch takes care of that. So my primary splashing spell is Poison. Whereas Wool is running Log, Rocket, and Fireball. Then for Splash, he has a Princess. For the tank, he's got a P.E.K.K.A. For tank killers, we have P.E.K.K.A., two Furnaces, Tornado, Minion Horde, Witch, and the E-Wiz. I think there are going to be some interesting decks. I have yet to see two skilled players playing Hog Cycle decks. Maybe it won't work because you can't outcycle 16 cards. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more quality OJ.